Well, greetings, church family. Uh, in our reading challenge, we are in the book of Zechariah, which is a challenging book for a number of reasons. Um, so I wanted to provide just a brief introduction and suggest just a few things to look for as we make our way through this book. First of all, consider the historical background, just to get our bearings. Zechariah's prophecy overlapped with Haggai's prophecy and supported the rebuilding work of the temple, as well as the ministry of Ezra. His audience uh, was a discouraged people. They had financial difficulties. They faced social and political opposition and pressure. And their work seemed very small in light of the task ahead compared to previous glories related to the, the first temple. Second, consider the structure of the book. Sometimes that's a good way to make sense of the details. <clears throat> Most break the book up into halves, chapters 1 through 8, uh, during the rebuilding work of the temple, and then chapters 9 through 14, sort of after the temple was rebuilt. And also the first half contains more symbolic visions, while the second half builds off of those visions. But the question arises, what, what are these visions about? Um, that brings us to our next thing to consider. Thirdly, consider the main themes in the book. And among the many themes that could be found in the book, the kingdom of God is perhaps the most pervasive. You know, they, the people were not to despise the day of small things, chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, why? Because their work was tied to the kingdom of God that was uh, coming. Since the kingdom is such a big thing, nothing associated with it, however small or insignificant it may seem, is insignificant or in vain because it's connected to this great work of the kingdom of God that, that God is accomplishing in the world. Now closely associated with the kingdom idea is the king, who is the king of this kingdom and the blessings that are associated with his kingship. Here in Zechariah, this king is talked about as the branch in chapter 3 and chapter 6 as this idea of the branch is found in other places as well in Isaiah and Jeremiah. In short, this is a reference to the Messiah who serves as king and priest and who suffers in order to bring forgiveness to God's people. This, of course, is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And lastly, how might this book encourage us today? You know, we want to appreciate the background and the meaning and, and the content of these books, but we don't do all that we're called to do unless we consider how it applies to us today. Now, one thing that helps us to do this is to consider how the message of Zechariah fits into the larger context and story of Scripture. Looking at how the New Testament uses this book will help us to see how to connect it to the larger story. Zechariah 9 through 14 is often cited in the Gospels to depict Christ as the messianic king, especially in his suffering and death, but also with respect to his rule and reign. So we can preach, we can actually preach the gospel to ourselves from this book. In addition, Zechariah's message reminds us that we are also involved in a temple building work. Uh, part of a kingdom that is growing and a people growing into a holy temple, the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 speaks of this. This work is not a small thing, regardless of how discouraging things may appear to be on the surface. <clears throat> God is at work in our midst and his kingdom is coming. May we respond to the call of chapter 1 in Zechariah where it reads, 
Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets cried out, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. But they did not hear or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. So let us hear, pay attention, and respond in faith, and keep reading. Thank you.